everybody. Welcome to a new webinar, Connecting and Using the iPad with your IFD. Uh, it, I hope everybody had a great new year. We're excited for, for 2023 and the, all the amazing things that we've got for you guys. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is kick this off with a refreshed webinar of Connecting and Using the iPad with your IFD. I'm joined today by Will Reichert, Pilot Support Representative. Any questions, uh, concerns, comments, please feel free to reach out to us at pilotsupport at avidine.com. This is a live webinar and there will be a live uh, question and answer session at the end. And of course, make sure that your speakers are on. We do have Will in the chat fielding your questions uh, as we go along. And then once we finish up, we will address a lot of those questions that we haven't answered. But a uh, friendly reminder, uh, may be worth holding your questions until the end uh, because a lot of that stuff may be answered throughout this webinar. Should be a fairly quick one. We've got a, a new format. We're not doing the hour and a half long webinars like we used to do. We've saved those long ones for the big trade shows that we love seeing you guys out at. So uh, should should be fairly quick. So moving right along. What we're going to be talking about today is what is the IFD 100 app. We're going to go into that how to download it, how to set up all of your databases for both demo and your Jeppesen databases. We're going to go into specific IFD 100 settings. As you know, you need to set up an IFD 100 specifically for the IFD that's in your aircraft. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. And then we're going to go into connecting to your panel mounted IFD through those Wi-Fi settings. We're going to touch uh, specifically on ForeFlight. I know there's a lot of great EFBs that are out there. Uh, for flight tends to be the one that we get the most questions on, uh, so we do talk about that one. I do touch on Sky Demon and how multitasking works with that, and some other ones, Oz Runways out in Australia, uh, App Plan, something like that, uh, later on in this webinar. Uh, but I will get into the, some of the specifics about how how that stuff works uh, a little bit here, and then and then maybe in some later webinars. I'm going to talk about some of the great training resources that you have available to you as an Avidine customer, and then we'll finish up with a live Q&A session at the end. Now, I do want to talk about the scope of this webinar. We are going to be talking about connecting the iPad via Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi connection is how you talk to that iPad. We don't use Bluetooth for iPads. We do use the Wi-Fi module that is built into the IFD. I'm going to talk about IFD 100, and I'm going to touch a little bit about ForeFlight. What I won't be talking about in this webinar is a, a deeper dive into those third-party receivers and some, some real specifics on ADSB. For that, there's a great resource on our Avidine Avionics YouTube channel. There's a video called Everything You Need to Know About Wi-Fi and the IFD. It is a pre-recorded webinar that we did not too long ago, uh, still back in 2022, but in the, in the later uh, half of 2022. Check that out, that's on our Avidine YouTube channel. This webinar will be up there as well. We'll have the webinar replay there. And if you have any technical issues, feel free to reach out to your Avidine dealer or reach out to us over at pilotsupport at avidine.com. Myself or my team will be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. So getting right into it, wireless connectivity over Wi-Fi with the IFD and your iPad. The IFD has an integrated Wi-Fi module inside the box. It's free and standard included. There's no additional cost involved with that. It does come with the IFD built in. And you've got several options for interfacing with your iPad on, on several app platforms. You've got the IFD 100 app, which is ours, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. We do have some third-party app uh, capabilities with ForeFlight, Cloud Ahoy, which is a fantastic tool for, for flight training and flight schools later on this year. Uh, we are going to have a flight school specific webinar. So if you run a flight school or you're a student at a flight school, uh, be sure to check that out. It's going to have a lot of great information in there. And I'll talk about Cloud Ahoy and, and that integration as well. For our, our European customers, we do have Sky Demon uh, operability out in Europe. And then in Australia, uh, Oz Runways is a fantastic app out there. Uh, app Plan is another one that we do interface with out there. And there are several more. Uh, we do make our wireless software development kit available to any third-party app developer out there, whether that be iOS or Android, that wants to create an app and have some integration with the IFD. So if you are watching this and you're an app developer, you're thinking about developing uh, an EFB or any kind of aviation app, reach out to us over at marketing at avidine.com. We'll be happy to work with you. We love these third-party app developers that, that want to integrate with us. So absolutely feel free to reach out to us and we'll see what we can do for you. 
So moving right along, what is the IFD 100 app? I feel it's really important to talk about what the IFD 100 app is and also what the IFD 100 app is not, uh, just so that we have a full understanding of what it is. Well, what is it? It's an innovative wireless remote control for your IFD. It is a big glass version of, of that IFD that sits on your iPad. It is not an EFB. Uh, it does work great to complement those third-party EFBs, but it provides another instance of that IFD in the cockpit. It's not a second IFD. It will show you all the information being sent over from that panel-mounted IFD onto your iPad, and you can absolutely control that IFD on your iPad. It'll allow you to edit your flight plans instantly with instant changes. Uh, what it does differently is independent screen selection. So you don't have to be looking at the same screen on the IFD versus the iPad. You will be able to see some different screens there. All the other information will be the same though. You'll be able to change your frequencies. You'll be able to see the frequencies active standby for comm and nav. And uh, data blocks, you'll be able to customize those. You will be able to see those a little bit differently. Uh, I do want to make a note that the stored routes that show up on your IFD 100 are coming from the IFD itself. So there's not two different banks of stored routes. It's going to pull that information from the, from the panel mounted IFD, which is where that stuff gets stored. ADSB weather and traffic is sent wirelessly to your iPad from the IFD. And I'll go a little bit into the architecture a little bit later about how that works. The great thing about the IFD 100 is that the page and tab user inter interface eliminates the learning curve for that. There's not really a separate uh, manual for it because the UI is ex it, it exactly the same. We've just got a couple of different locations for some of those buttons that we've had to put onto the screen. And what I mean by that is you can see the same page and tab user interface. You see the IFD 550 on the left and the IFD on the iPad on the right. You can see that this is set up for an IFD 550. We still have synthetic vision, FMS, map, and auxiliary pages. And then our flight plan, info, route, waypoint, and nearest tabs that are on the bottom. And on the right side, you can see the same flight plan information. You can create or edit that flight plan from either the IFD or the iPad, and it will get sent over immediately in real time. We're not sending it or receiving like we would in, say, for flight. Everything's done automatically in real time. Same dedicated function keys. As you can see on the IFD 550, your direct procedure nearest frequency enter and clear buttons are on the right side of the bezel. On the IFD in landscape mode, I'm sorry, the IFD 100 in landscape mode, those are going to be on the left side of the screen. So we did have to move those around just a little bit, but those buttons are exactly the same with the same functions. And again, you've got the same frequency readouts. Those are on the top left on either the IFD 550 or IFD 100 on your iPad. And those are able to be changed in real time. If you change your frequency on IFD 100, your standby frequency, it will blast over in real time over to your panel mounted IFD and vice versa. Data link weather and or onboard weather radar connected to your IFD 100 app will also appear on your, I'm sorry, your IFD 100 app. It's going to show the same. All right. Also, TAS and ADSB traffic will be able to see that as well. And you also get the same nav store status indicator. So if you're wondering what mode the IFD is in, well, just look up on your IFD 100 app on your iPad. There is independent page selection, and I do want to point this out. All that same information does come over to IFD 100, but you are able to see some different views. So it is a big glass version of your, your IFD, but you are able to see some different pages. In this case, I have the synthetic vision tab pulled up on my IFD. Uh, coming up to the Carmel VOR, and then on the IFD 100, I've got my flight plan pulled up with the map expanded, and I'm looking at a north up map orientation on my iPad. And then again here, I can see approach charts and airport diagrams on my IFD 100 as well. While my panel mounted IFD is still running in the SVS tab, I'm able to brief my approach plates and everything on my iPad with my IFD 100 app, provided that I do have the chart database loaded up into my iPad. I can see that right there on IFD 100. Big benefit for IFD 440 customers because we can't display those charts on the IFD itself or on the 440 itself. I do have the ability to show those charts on my IFD 100 app, even though I have a four series IFD. And that's just a matter of getting IFD 100 capability uh, from Jeppesen. You get that part of your bundle 
and you'll be able to see that once you get into your Jepson download, which I'll, I'll show in a couple slides later, uh, how to download those charts and all of your other databases from Jepson on your IFD 100 app. IFD 100 also works in portrait mode. So all I've done was just turn my iPad upright and I'm able to see the same information on my iPad as well. Here's just another view of the synthetic vision page. I do get a large screen moving map of my 3D synthetic vision, which is free and included with the IFD. Uh, I'll be able to see that page uh, much larger on my iPad. I can see that as well. Now, if I have an IFD 550, keep in mind that IFD 100 will mirror or match the features of my panel mounted IFD. So if I have an IFD 550, which has that extra synthetic vision page, I will also get that extra synthetic vision page on my IFD 100 app. If I had a 540, I wouldn't get this uh, exocentric, I'm sorry, this egocentric view. I will see that if I do have an IFD 550. So 550 customers, you will have that added capability on your IFD 100 app. It works great in portrait mode when you're connected to a 550 and it gives you a couple of different display options, including split screen mode. So I can split this up if I have my IFD 100 in portrait mode, I can look at my egocentric synthetic vision up top and my exocentric synthetic vision on the bottom. And I can change that bottom page as well. If I'm in the synthetic vision page, as you can see on the iPad, I can switch between an ADI, the FMS, I can look at my exocentric synthetic vision on my map, and I can also do some work inside my auxiliary page if my IFD 100 app is running in portrait mode. You can connect two, IF, um, two iPads, excuse me, onto a single IFD. Or if I had a dual IFD installation, I could also connect iPad number one to IFD number one and my second iPad to IFD number two. The cool thing about that is, in theory, you can have up to four iPads connected in a dual IFD setup. So everybody in the plane could be running IFD 100. Not that you'd necessarily want to, but you do have that capability. All right, so let's get into downloading IFD 100 from the App Store. It's pretty simple. Of course, as you know, about late last year, we did release uh, software version 10.3.0.2. And with that, we also had our different IFD 100 apps. Now the 10.3 IFD 100 app did come out a little bit earlier before the software was released, but that was because IFD Trainer did come out running 10.3 software, just so that you guys could play around with the new software and get to know it before the software release came out. So there's two different versions that are still available on the App Store. You have IFD 100 10.3 and IFD 100 10.2. If you have not upgraded your software to software 10.3, and you're still running a version of 10.2, you will need IFD 110.2 to run IFD 100 with your panel mounted IFD. If you have upgraded to 10.3.0.2, you will need IFD 110.3 to work with your panel mounted IFD. So just keep in mind of which one you've got and everything will be great. Go ahead and download it. Once it's fully downloaded, go ahead and click open. Now, the next thing we get into is setting up your databases. Now, I mentioned that you can run demo databases or Jefferson databases. This is how we're going to get into that. So the first time that you use IFD 100, you're going to want to download those databases. Now, it does come with the demo databases. So we'll get into that a little bit later. So from your home screen, go ahead and click on the IFD 100 app, launch that. And the first thing that you're going to see is your Jepson login screen. One thing that's really important to note is make sure that you're connected to a either a good cellular net, cellular network or your home Wi-Fi. Or you're actually getting good internet so that you can download these databases. You've got two options when you go to download your databases. You can either do Jepson subscription or you can uh, go straight into the demo databases. If you're going to go with your Jepson subscription, go ahead and punch in your Jepson. Uh, username and password, the same username and password that you would use for your JDM account, whatever, however you've got it set up, because this is tied directly to Jeppesen. In order for things like flight plan transfer to work, the databases on your IFD 100 app have to match the, the nav database that is in your IFD. So if you're going to use IFD 100, just get into the habit of updating the nav database on IFD 100 the same time that you update your nav database on your IFDs and everything will be fine. If you have not already or if you're a new IFD customer, 
Uh, if you haven't taken advantage of the free Jeppesen 60-day trial that we offer with Jeppesen, absolutely go ahead and do that. We have a knowledge base article on our, on our knowledge base. It's called Jeppesen Pricing for Avidine Equipment. And there's also a Jeppesen 60-day trial knowledge base. So go check those out. That's available in our pilot support page on avidine.com. Go ahead and fill that out. It doesn't cost you anything. We don't ask for your card information or anything like that. Just gets you in the system and it activates a 60-day trial. So we've logged in with our credentials. We've gotten to this page. This is our database download page. It's gonna look just like this. Depending on what products that you have in your Jefferson subscription, you're gonna see this list. Uh, pretty self-explanatory here. Anything with a green check mark is already downloaded onto the iPad. Anything with a blue cloud with the arrow is available for download. So this is where we check out uh, what cycle that we have, which one's currently downloaded, which ones we need to download. You can only download one at a time. They do go fairly quickly. Uh, it's it's not like loading up a terrain database onto uh, on, onto actual avionics equipment. It, it does go really, really fast, especially if you have really fast internet. So one at a time, go ahead and click on one and then hit download. Let that progress bar move left to right. And then uh, once that's done, we can go ahead and move on to the next database. Once we've downloaded all of those databases, we'll go ahead and hit start in the lower left corner once those uploads are complete. And just a reminder here to download the latest database when the new cycle is released. How do we know that we've downloaded the same databases or that they match? Well, just like on your panel mounted IFD, you do have a database status page. And that's gonna be in the aux page system tab, status databases, line select key. And just like the panel mounted IFD, if any of these cycles are in yellow, they are either current or they are not, I'm sorry, they're either expired or not yet current. Current databases will always show up in white letters on this database status page. So we check that, make sure they're both in white, just double check those cycles. As you can see here, my nav is a worldwide database, for example, and the cycle expires July 18th, 2019. Okay, so I mentioned a little bit about the Jeppesen database and a couple of those knowledge base articles. This is a little bit about Jeppesen database bundles. We did compile all of that information and all that pricing for you into a knowledge base article. It's called Jeppesen Pricing for Avidine Equipment. How do I get to the knowledge base? Go to our website, avidine.com. We recently revamped our website. So some things may look a little bit different, but we still have the pilot support icon at the very, very top of the main page. Click on that, go down to our knowledge base, and it is the most popular knowledge base article that we have. So it is up top, and if you can't find it in the search bar, just type in Jeppesen, and then you will see a list of knowledge base articles having to do with Jeppesen or databases. And that Jeppesen pricing for Avidine Equipment Knowledge Base article will be there. I did recently verify with our friends over at Jeppesen that that is the most current price as of this broadcast. So what you see there is, is uh, current and valid pricing for all of the Jepson bundles for your different uh, coverages, for your different uh, products, for your different uh, bundles. If you have an Integra bundle with a dual IFD or a single IFD or a la carte, all of those tables are there. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us, reach out to Jepson and all that is available to you there. Okay, so now that we've got databases out of the way, we can get into customizing our IFD 100 to match the IFD that's in our actual panel. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna change around the app settings. So we'll go click on the settings icon in our iPad. We're gonna scroll all the way down to our IFD 110.3 app. Scroll through that list on the left side and we're gonna change all those app settings here. There's, there's four settings that I wanna talk about specifically to getting that uh, set up for our IFDs. The first setting is gonna be your IFD type. The IFD type is where you tell the IFD 100 app what model IFD it's gonna be connecting to, and it does default to IFD 550. So if you have a 540 or a 440, you wanna make sure that you go into this setting and make it match the IFD that you want it to talk to. So we'll go back and we'll look at the IFD chassis ID. In dual IFD installations, this is where you're gonna tell the IFD 100 which IFD it's gonna be connecting to. It defaults to one, so if you have a single IFD in your plane, you don't have to mess with this, leave it at one. 
if you have a dual IFD installation and let's say you want your IFD 100 to talk to your number two IFD, you set this up for number two. Now your iPad ID, that's where you set what number the iPad is going to be. Is it going to be iPad number one? Is it going to be iPad number two? Again, it defaults for number one. If you have two iPads that you want to talk to a single IFD, then you would set one iPad up for number one and then the other iPad for iPad ID number two. And that's that's really important, especially when we get into running IFD 100 at the same time on a single IFD. Wi-Fi ADS-B support. This does get missed a lot. We do get a lot of questions in tech support and pilot support about this. Wi-Fi ADS-B support, what does that mean? If your panel mounted IFD has a certified hardwired ADS-B receiver, Skytrax 200, GTX 345, and GT 9000, leave this switch off. ADS-B weather will still show up on your IFD 100. If you are using a third-party wireless receiver, such as a Stratus 3, a Level Bomb, or one of those ADS-B receivers, now you want to turn that on because what that basically does is that tells IFD 100, okay, I'm going to be looking for traffic and weather from the receiver and not the IFD that I'm talking to. So uh, just to recap, if you have a, a hardwired receiver, shut it off. If you have a wireless receiver, turn it on. So now we get into connecting to the IFD. So uh, the host network in the IFD, uh, as you know, with uh, 10.3, we did change that around. Uh, it's no longer Leo Wi-Fi. It's IFD underscore and then your IFD serial number. That will denote the IFD hotspot. It used to be called Leo Wi-Fi. All these instructions that I'm getting ready to go, at least for the next uh, four or five slides, are all going to be available in your IFD pilot guide both the four series and the five series. So for that host network, we're gonna to go to our setup page under networks. We're gonna see the network name there. We can change that. We can also change that password. Um, so you can customize that. Just make sure that your password has an eight character minimum, but we'll be able to see it from there. Once we are ready to connect, we highlight that network and then we're gonna use the connect line select key there until the Wi-Fi icon turns green at the right of the network name. Once it does and it turns green, we go back to our iPad, we go up to the settings, we go to our Wi-Fi settings, we go find that serial number of our IFD, and then we connect to it. And then just like uh, previously, your password hasn't changed. You can change it, uh, but the default password is ABCDEF1234 uh, right out of the factory unless you've changed that. Now. Here's something very, very important. If this is the first time that you've connected that iPad to that IFD, you're gonna get what's called a connection request. It is a new cast message that comes with 10.3. We've changed around some of the security protocols, made it a little bit more robust for you guys. So the first time that you connect, you're gonna get this connection request. You may see the name of your iPad. You may see a, uh, an address there. Um, pretty simple, just go under devices and they're going to show up as blocked initially because it requires you to make some sort of action to allow it. Just go ahead and, sw and switch that over to always and you no longer have to do that every time that you boot up that IFD and you connect that iPad to that IFD. I want to talk a little bit about the ADSB over Wi-Fi. So in order to get traffic and weather over to your iPad from your IFD, and if you have a certified hardwired ADSB receiver, such as a Skytrax 200, under devices, you are going to see a selection called ADSB over Wi Fi. We want to make sure that that is turned on. So if you're getting capstone traffic and weather, go or capstone high speed traffic and weather from your ADSB receiver, you will see ADSB over Wi Fi, and you want to turn that on if you want to send that information over your Wi-Fi network over to your iPad. So with four flight, same thing, we're gonna send ADSB traffic and weather over to it, and we will have the ability for flight plan transfer both in and out from that iPad if we are using a certified ADSB weather. All right, so moving on to connecting for flight with the IFD and transferring flight plans. Again, so how that works is we'll do the ADSB traffic and weather, we'll do flight plan transfer, 
with a certified receiver. Uh, we'll also do that with a, a wireless uh, setup as well. But let's talk about flight plan transfers for a minute. So in order to do that, and we've once we've got the iPad set up on the IFD's wireless network, and we've pulled up for flight, we've created our flight plan, and we're getting ready to send that over to our IFD. All we've got to do here is we'll see this icon, this plane icon with the parentheses around it. We'll go ahead and click on that, and we'll be presented with two different options. We can either send our flight plan to the panel, meaning the IFD, or we can load our flight plan from the panel. Well, in this case, we built our flight plan in for flight. We're getting ready to send it. So we hit that icon and we hit send to panel. Give it a couple of seconds, the wheel's gonna spin around. And then eventually we're gonna see in our routes tab that that flight plan has then made it over into the routes list. Once we're ready to move that over to the flight plan tab and then activate the flight plan, we'll go ahead and select the activate route line select key on the left side make any last minute changes that we need to make, and then activate our flight plan. Next thing you know, our next waypoint turns magenta. I've gotten my GPS position. My next leg turns that barber pole, the legs beyond that turn white, and I'm ready to go. You can also do that same setup in reverse. So we talked about sending to panel. Now I'm gonna talk about loading from panel. So just like we do, we'll build our flight plan up in the IFD and we're getting ready to pull it from the IFD and bring it over into ForeFlight. We'll go ahead and hit that same icon. We'll select Load From Panel, and we'll see the Flight Plan tab now shows that flight plan from the IFD, okay? So a little bit about multitasking. Uh, of course, some years ago, uh, iPads came out with the ability and a lot of apps came out with the ability to bring up two apps at the same time. With IFD 100, this works in landscape mode only. So with our iPad in landscape mode and with IFD 100 up and running on the iPad or for flight, doesn't matter, we'll go ahead and take your finger from the bottom of that screen and swipe up just a little bit to bring up the menu of your recent apps. Now for flight may or may not be in that menu of recent apps. That just means you just got to close it out. You got to, you know, bring up for flight or, or, something, just make sure that the other app is in that recent apps menu. Then we're going to take that app and we're going to, we're going to, uh, with our finger, we're going to drag up and over to the right, basically pushing IFD 100 out of the way just a little bit to make room for the app. Once you do that, go ahead and let go and we'll see the 50-50 IFD 100 and our four flight app show up in landscape mode on our iPads. You can run IFD 100 and Four Flight uh, on the same iPad at the same time. We're going to see GPS position. We're going to see the full set of features available for IFD 100 and and Four Flight. Uh, we won't have any any diminishing features. We won't lose any features if we have it in this setup. We'll be able to control both apps at the same time. Remember, IFD 100 is a remote control for your IFD. Four Flight is an electronic flight bag. They work very well together. They're not necessarily designed to be competing apps at all. Uh, it, you, it, Four Flight's a great flight planning tool. A lot of the EFBs, all the EFBs that we work with are great flight planning tools. Uh, but they are EFBs, and IFD 100 is a big remote control. So they do work very well together uh, at the same time as, as part of your uh, the cockpit management. We also work great with Sky Demon out in Europe. This is just an example, a screenshot of Sky Demon on the left and then IFD 100 on the right. So training resources, we've got a ton of them and we have came out with a, a lot of newer uh, training resources for you guys, kind of revamped a couple of things. And as we go along into 2023, we are going to be uh, sprucing those up for you as well. So new pilot guides, we did release a new pilot guide for all of our IFDs. Uh, those are shipped with new IFD purchases in your pilot welcome kit, that really cool leather case, that black leather case that comes with the IFDs. Those are in there. We do have a free PDF download available with the latest one. So if you don't have the latest version that includes software version 10302, you can get this for free PDF download on avidine.com. Just click on the support 
column up top, click on manuals and guides, find your IFD and download that pilot guide in PDF. Works great if you're loading it up as a file in for flight, you wanna bring up your pilot guide, shows up great there. We do have hard copies available for purchase. Uh, currently they're $23.65 on Amazon and there is a Kindle version available for $9.99 on Amazon for the pilot guide. We've also re-released our quick reference guides for our IFDs. Those are the same thing, they're available with the new uh, IFDs uh, from the factory in that new pilot welcome kit. We do have uh, five series and four series versions, which includes the IFD 100 setup instructions that I went over today. We have free PDF downloads available on avidine.com, same exact place under support, manuals and guides, find the quick reference guide for your particular IFD. And again, they are available for hard copy purchase if you would like a hard copy version on Amazon for $14.99. And the new Kindle versions are on Amazon as well for $4.99. As of the date of this recording, these are the current prices for both of those guides. We still have our Avidine Live forum that is real popular with our Avidine customer base. It's a very active forum on Avidine Live. You get a uh, customer forum, you get company news, any new product information will get sent out. That's one of the places that we put the new product information on. Software update information, questions, legacy product updates are all going to come out on here. Go ahead and check it out on www.avidinelive.com. And of course, we do have a, an updated version of the Michael Bauer book, Flying with the Avidine IFD. It provides scenario-based training, and we do have some videos that, that complement that I'll, I'll explain that in the next slide. This is available on Amazon. If you look, we do have uh, the version three. It does cover some of the new features with uh, iOS 10.3, or AviOS 10.3, excuse me. They are available on Amazon and on the, on the Avidine store. Again, those training videos that accompany the lessons in the Bauer book are available on our recently updated website if you go to support training and resources and you look for pilot training videos that good looking guy in the camo hat there is uh messing around with that ipad in that cessna 206 that's where you find all those training videos so you'll find all those individual lessons and then as we update them that's where we'll put those those new training videos that accompany the lessons in the michael bauer book Webinars on demand, this webinar and all of our previous webinars are available under the webinar replays link. So under the support tab, hit training and resources, click on webinar replays, and that's where you'll find our Avidine webinars on demand on our main website. And again, our customer knowledge base is a fantastic resource for all of the questions that our, our pilots and our dealers and our customers may have about anything and everything. We're constantly updating these articles. We're constantly adding new ones. It's a great first resource for all of our customers. Before reaching out to tech support, check and see if, knowledge, if the knowledge base has an article for it. Chances are it probably does. Uh, you can get links to your pilot guides, all of your warranty information's there, how to activate your databases, little operational tips and tricks, and a whole host of other articles available there in the knowledge base. You don't need a login for this. You can just go straight to the knowledge base. So go ahead and search by whatever your topic is, hit search, and then that will come up. Another fantastic, fantastic resource, my good friend Gary Reeves. He's a master CFI. He was the 2019 National Instructor of the Year awarded by the FAA. Uh, and he wrote a fantastic book and he does some amazing, amazing training both online and in person in either his aircraft or your aircraft. Uh, so fantastic, fantastic resource. Make sure to go check it out. Pick up a copy of his book uh, and check out pilotsafety.org. He's got some fantastic Avidine training there. We also have our IFD trainer app on our iPad. It's a free, pay, free play simulator for the iPad. Go ahead and download it right off the app store. It does use certified flight code, so it's, it's essentially like running an actual IFD in the plane. A couple of limitations there. Obviously, it's not going to track a VOR because it is a simulator, but it is a free download. It does emulate all six different versions of our IFDs. Social media, we're always very active on social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and two different YouTube channels. This webinar is going to be uploaded to our Avidine Avionics YouTube channel. Go ahead and check that out. A ton of videos, whether they be training videos, company videos, uh, 
all kinds of things throughout the year we'll post up there. And then of course our Avidine Tech Support YouTube channel is our second YouTube channel. That is where all of your installation information will come from. We did release our interactive installation manual for our installers and our dealers that, that does have some training videos uh, tied to them. Those videos are actually hosted on that Avidine Tech Support channel. So if you wanna know about how the IFD interfaces with a uh, G5, you can certainly find that video. How the interface looks with an NGT 9000, uh, our, our tech support team goes into great uh, detail explaining those interfaces and how those configurations are set up and how those, how those different things talk to each other. So it's a fantastic resource. And with that, I'm gonna wrap it up here. That was connecting and using the iPad with your IFD. I'm gonna open up the questions and it looks like Will has been great at answering a bunch of those. So let's see, uh, let's see what we can answer. Will, what, uh, what you got for me? Hello, everybody. Uh, let me see here. There was one question I just want to go back. Oh, um, we wanted to go over real quick just uh, how to, uh, let's see, where was it? Change the configuration uh, in the IFD to allow a device to uh, be allowed always versus blocked versus once, that whole thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yep. what I can do is I can go back. I'll go back to that slide. Yes, please. And I'll talk about that. So with iOS, with AviOS 10.3 is what we're talking about there. That's the connection request. Can everybody see that? So if it's the first time that you connect an iPad to the IFD, that particular iPad to the IFD, you're going to get this connection request once you bring up an app. So let's say I've made the Wi-Fi connection and I bring up IFD 100, what I should see on my iPad is this cast message that says connection request. Once I do that, all I've got to do is go into my aux page, my setup menu, or down to devices, and we're going to see a list of iPads that it has made that connection with, or at least it, it has prompted a, a connection for, and they'll come up as blocks. So all we have to do is go down there and change that to uh, always, never, uh, ignore, uh, if we want to connect the iPad, I set mine up for always just so that I don't have to do it a second time the next time that I power cycle the IFD. Anytime that I connect that iPad to that host network, then it will show up as always. All right, one other here, and I think this might be something a bit more uh, important to touch on as well. Sure. Uh, so we got a question from Frank Furbish about uh, integration of the IFD with Flight Plan Go or Wing X Pro. Uh, so maybe just talk about the SDK and how that whole process works. Again, I know we mentioned it earlier on in the webinar, but uh, I feel like that's something that uh, is uh, pretty important. Flight Plan Go is recently purchased by a competitor. Um, I don't expect there to be any integration with them, with Flight Plan Go, but uh, it's kind of that. We, we don't really have any any control over, over Flight Plan Go or, or any of our app developers, right? So we do make it available. It is then up to that uh, developer to update their uh, their app or their, their software for that integration. And anytime that we make a change, we'll send it all out to, to those companies. And it's really up to them to keep that updated. Let's see, uh, can my IFD box be sent back with latest user manual? Um, assuming maybe you've got it in repair, uh, I'm sure we can do that. Uh, go ahead and send us an email over at pilotsupportnavidine.com. We'll, we'll make a note, we'll make sure that uh, we get you a new hard copy of that manual. That looks to be about it. Oh, no, I think we've got one more. Let's see. Uh, version 10.3 now displays Stratus ADSB in traffic. Yes, yes, that is a different. So Art, that is a different uh, setting. I mentioned previously to go check out my other webinar on everything you need to know about connecting the iPad and the IFD on our YouTube channel. That one's going to be a, a deep dive into that and how that is set up. So uh, if we're looking at, at third-party receiver specific stuff check that video out that's available on our YouTube channel, our Avidine YouTube channel under videos. OK, 
can you review 10.3 setup and iPad settings again? Okay, yeah, sure, not a problem. So the iPad settings, the iPad app settings are no different between 10.2 and 10.3. What I was talking about there was specifically how to set up your IFD 100 to talk to the specific iPad. So when we get into our IFD 100 settings, what we'll do is we'll go through these different four. You have IFD type, chassis ID, iPad ID, and Wi-Fi ADS-B support. IFD type is just the type of IFD that we're talking to. The chassis ID is, is this IFD number one or number two. iPad ID is this iPad number one or number two and Wi-Fi ADS-B support. Now remember, Wi-Fi ADS-B support is important if we're talking about traffic and weather being sent over. If we have a certified hardwired ADS-B receiver, we're gonna turn Wi-Fi ADS-B support off in our IFD 100 app. And if we're using something like a Stratus, we're gonna turn that on. Let's see. All right. Is FlyQ the same as for flight? Uh, nope. It is not. No, these are two separate apps. Yeah, two separate apps. They're they're both uh, EFBs, but yeah, two two separate apps. If you're screen splitting with planning soft with flight uh, flight planning software in horizontal and rotate to portrait, what happens? You lose one. And if you rotate it back, uh, I think it, I think it comes back, or one might end up being black. But I mean. I have the iPad doesn't catch fire or nothing. Uh, I think you might just lose an app. You just got to bring it back up. All right. So Branislav had a question regarding uh, the setup. So kind of like what we just went over with uh, setting up IFD type and chassis ID as well as iPad. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, let's see. I believe the IFD was set incorrectly as IFD two instead of one. I can only view, not control. Um, well. Let's see, on the unit, not the iPad. Well, there would be a couple of other problems that you might be experiencing with that, but uh, we can go over this as well. As far as the IFD 100 uh, interface with the IFD, um, also missing databases will cause problems with flight plan transfer. For example, uh, if you don't have your uh, obstacle database or nav database inside the IFD 100, but you do on the IFD, um, you will be able to view and uh, get things like frequencies, but you will not be able to transfer flight plans. Uh, but uh, if you would like to go into this further, uh, send us an email at pilotsupportatavanine.com and uh, I, myself, uh, Randall or Mike will be able to help you. Yep, absolutely. Yep, great, uh, great job. Um, if you have any questions, I know we, we're starting to see a lot of questions about uh, third-party receivers. Um, again, a little outside the scope of this particular wife, uh, webinar, but if you are wanting to know about third-party receivers, how that whole thing works, go ahead and make sure to check out that everything you need to know about Wi-Fi and the IFD webinar. Give that a look there. Uh, I think that's going to be about do it. Um, if you guys have any further questions, reach out to us at pilot support at avidine.com, tech support at avidine.com. If you are a app developer and you want to work with us, uh, you want the SDK, go ahead and reach out at marketing at And that has been connecting using the iPad with your IFD. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and be on the lookout for this webinar. It will be up on our YouTube channel and on our website very soon. Have a great day, guys. See ya.